Since the NFL began in 1920, there have been over 150 stadiums to host an NFL game. And some of those stadiums have really sucked. Let's examine the worst ones through the Super Bowl era. And I'll tell you exactly why these arenas were the worst NFL stadiums of all time. But first, a word from our sponsor. It's been a long, dark off season. We waited all year for this moment, not just for football, but to win money on prize picks. That's right, using my code five points, all first time users on prize picks will receive an instant deposit match of up to $100. It's pretty simple. If you deposit $69, prize picks will give you $69. Nice. You, you figured out the math. So how do you turn that deposit and match into cold hard cash? Well, you pick two to six players and then decide if they will get more or less of their prize pick projection. You can win, get this, 25 times your money on any entry. So for opening weekend here, I've got Derrick Henry to go less than 90.5 yards, Bijan Robinson to go less than 71.5 yards, and Josh Allen to go less than 40.5 yards. Yeah, I'm a giant hater. Prize Picks offers projections on more than just the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, hell, even NASCAR, tennis, and MMA, and more. They have an awesome promotion schedule, so you can always take advantage of juicy deals like Taco Tuesday and Flex Friday. And even now, they're giving away a free square. If Dak Prescott throws for one plus yard, you win. And the best part, you aren't playing against some mad genius in his basement. It's just you versus the available projections. Plus, your money is safe and can be easily withdrawn. Collect those winnings, baby. So, after this video, first time users go to prizepicks.com or download the app and use my code 5 points for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, that's promo code 5 points on prize picks. Good luck this season. You and I are going to need it. Before we get started, let's lay down the criteria. We're going Super Bowl era only, and each stadium on this list had to host for at least two full seasons to be considered. Temporary homes like that icebox TCF Bank Field in Minnesota don't count. And also, no active stadium, so FedEx Field, you've dodged a bullet for once. The Kingdom, Seattle, Washington. When the Kingdom was opened in 1976, it was state of the art. Following the quote unquote success of the Astrodome, the Kingdom sought to be another dual use artificial turf stadium that would host football, baseball, and even basketball. That's tri use not dual use. The King Dome was very loud, but it lacked any sort of character. It was sterile and the turf was bad. Though players loved the atmosphere and so did the fans, eventually it fell into disrepair with a ceiling collapse in 1994 that led to the Mariners being evicted for the last 20 games of their season. It was mercifully imploded in 2000, having been one of the worst NFL stadiums of its era. Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. This one even hosted a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 30, the last whimpers of Cowboys relevance back in ancient history. Yes, the 1990s. However, throughout its tenure as an NFL venue, Sun Devil Stadium delivered a muted, dry, and scorching hot experience. Thrust into action because owner Bill Bibwell simply wanted to retire in Arizona, the Cardinals set up shop here from 1988 to 2005, and Sun Devil Stadium suffered from hot temperatures, sparsely attended home games, and some pretty bad football. Finally, the Cardinals moved out for State Farm Stadium in 2006, and Sun Devil was returned to ASU exclusively. So it's not an awful stadium, just an impersonal hot concrete bowl. The Yale Bowl, New Haven, Connecticut. Yes, one of America's oldest stadiums was used to host the New York Giants for over two years in 1973 and 1974, while Yankee Stadium was being renovated and Giant Stadium was being built. Not only did the G-Men only win one game here in those two seasons, but they had to put up with a nearly 60-year-old stadium at the time, one that didn't have proper concessions, bathrooms, air conditioning, and uh, locker rooms. That's right, the Yale Bowl still has players dress inside the nearby Smilo Field Center, then walk 200 yards, that's two football fields, in front of tennis courts and portable toilets to get inside the stadium. Could you imagine that happening today? The Yale Bowl is still active as a stadium for the Ivy League school of the same name, except nobody gives a shit about their football program. Anaheim Stadium, Anaheim, California. 
Though somewhat better than the largely empty and sterile Los Angeles Coliseum, the Los Angeles Rams moved to Anaheim Stadium in 1980, marked the beginning of an awful run in one of the NFL's worst stadiums of all time. Late owner Carol Rosenblum negotiated a deal that would have Anaheim Stadium, previously baseball only, reconfigured to accommodate football. And in the process, they added seats, removed the view of the local mountains, and created an eyesore of a football configuration replete with a baseball diamond on the field of play and seats far, far away from the action. The reconfiguration also caused the Big A scoreboard to be moved to the parking lot, further diminishing the stadium's charm. Like many dual-use failures where teams were just stuck putting up with the conditions they were in, like an unhappy marriage, the Rams stuck it out here for 14 years, but they moved to St. Louis because Georgia Frontieri was from there. Rosenblum incidentally never saw his team play in the Big A as he actually accidentally drowned before the 1980 season. Yikes. Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota. The home of the Minnesota Vikings from 1961 to 1981. The original Met has a pretty sad story. Now, most dual-use stadiums at least try to church up their appearance for football on Sundays, but this one still just looked like a baseball stadium that had football going on at the time. On top of that failure, this was an outdoor venue in Minneapolis, which hosted football games in the winter. So if that was rough for the players down there, it must have been terrible in the concrete stands high above the field. Once the Metrodome was opened in 1981, this stadium, located outside of Minneapolis, sat abandoned and in disrepair for about four years, finally being torn down in 1984. Four, the Mall of America was built on the site in 1992. Oakland Coliseum, Oakland, California. Probably the most maligned NFL stadium of all time, besides FedEx Field. The Oakland Coliseum is somehow not the worst on this list. That's because when it opened, it was actually state-of-the-art and ahead of its time. However, the baseball and football merger in this place was always awkward. The huge foul ground for the baseball field didn't really help the impersonal vibe of the football field. Once Mount Davis was added in 2006, what little charm was left, the view of the mountains was gone. And despite half the stadium being upgraded, in air quotes, of course, it still sucked for football. On top of that, the stadium began to fall into gross disrepair, both inside, outside, underneath, above, you name it. After a failed proposal after proposal, the Raiders finally had enough and left for new digs in Las Vegas. And it's only a matter of time before this place meets its completely abandoned fate when the A's move the Miami Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida. This stadium started out great. However, over time, it didn't age well and eventually ended up being one of the worst stadiums in NFL history. The Orange Bowl hosted the Dolphins from 1966 to 1986. The dominant hurricane teams in the 90s, five Super Bowls and tons of bowl games during its 70 plus year lifespan. But like any 72 year old, it fell into disrepair as it began to show its age in the early 80s. It was replaced by Joe Robbie Stadium, AKA Hard Rock, AKA a Miami Gardens, the current home of the Dolphins. The stadium had a sterile concrete environment, wasn't in a good part of town, and was creaking and falling apart towards the end. Yes, it was an iconic NFL venue, but it just wasn't all that good. The Orange Bowl was demolished in 2008. War Memorial Stadium, Buffalo, New York. Known colloquially as the Rock Pile, War Memorial Stadium in Buffalo served as the early oddly configured home of the Bills for eight AFL seasons and then four NFL campaigns in the Super Bowl era. This was an oddly configured multi-use stadium that was cold and uninviting. Combine that with Buffalo winters and you probably enjoyed getting frozen to your seat, but at least you got to see OJ Simpson slice up a few defenses here. War Memorial was replaced in 1972 by Rich Stadium and demolished in 1989. And finally, the worst NFL permanent host stadium of all time, Kazar Stadium, San Francisco, California. Host of both the 49ers and for one season the Oakland Raiders in 1960, Kazar Stadium was about the lowest end you could possibly be for an NFL stadium during the Super Bowl era. Its single-tier concrete construction was already old in 1968, and it served as the Niners' home for two post-merger seasons until it was mercifully replaced by Candlestick Park in 1971, which wasn't exactly a picnic, but much better than this place. Kazar actually lived on after 
that, but was abandoned and slated for demolition in the late 80s. However, it was preserved and recently renovated and is the home of a professional soccer team, having further been renovated in 2015. However, when it was an NFL stadium, it was shite. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting videos on sports on Five Points Viz, and you made it to my next video.